did Jesus have brothers and sisters? Well, I've answered this question once before in episode 26, and I'd encourage you to watch that one. As a Catholic, we believe the answer is no, that Jesus did not have any brothers and sisters, that he was the only son of Mary, begotten by God, um, as the incarnation of God made man. But there are some examples in scripture that seem to contradict this. The most common one that's referenced is Matthew chapter 12, verse 17. And it's not just in Matthew's gospel, it's also in Luke's gospel, and I believe it's in Mark's gospel as well. And it's when Jesus is sitting in the house teaching and someone comes in and says, Master, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are standing outside wanting to meet with you. And Jesus says, Who are my mother and my brothers and my sisters? The ones who do the will of God. Pointing to the fact that we need to move away from a biological inheritance of the kingdom of God to a spiritual inheritance, to a membership of the church, to belonging to the Holy Spirit. But those words brothers and sisters, as I mentioned in the previous video, in the Aramaic that Jesus would have been speaking, meant something more broad than just children of the same two parents. It would mean cousins in many cases, that you are members of a broader uh, understanding of, of clan and, and kin. So it's a little different than how we use the term Today, when we think brother and sister, we think, okay, you share a mother. But back then, those words would have been less specific. And yet we have to question, well, but it says that, why would we think otherwise? And as Catholics, the easy answer to say is, well, it's part of our tradition. Men and women of the past who may not have the same level of knowledge of Scripture that we do on a, a historical understanding, right? We have a great deal of access to being able to study periods of history and understand the development of thought more so than the people then. But they had more of a grasp of the languages because they were much closer to when Greek and Latin and Hebrew would have been spoken and used more often, at least in the context of what the scriptures would have said. It's like saying, we have a better chance today of understanding what Shakespeare meant in his plays than they do a thousand or two thousand years from now, because we're much closer in proximity culturally. So it's easy for us to simply say, it's a part of our tradition. They wouldn't have just simply arbitrarily said, this is what we think. They would have had good reasons for it. But it's responsible for us as Catholics to wonder what would those reasons have been. And in my previous video, I discussed the original debate on this subject, which took place, I believe, in the fourth century. And St. Jerome was the one who established what the church believes, that Mary remained a virgin, that she never had any other children. And he sought to explain that through scripture. But I'd like to point out something that I didn't in the last video, because there is an example in scripture that seems to indicate that Jesus was the only child of Mary. And that takes place in John's Gospel, chapter 19, when Mary and John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple, were standing at the foot of the cross. And Jesus tells Mary, woman, behold your son, and tells John, behold your mother. And it says, from that hour, the disciple took Mary into his home. When a woman who was a Jew died, or no, when a woman's husband died, she was entrusted to her children, specifically to her sons. And of course, Mary's husband, Joseph, would have died at this point. And so she was entrusted to Jesus. That's how they honored their father and their mother, one of the ways they honored them, not just listening to them as they were growing up, but by taking care of them in their old age. And that's something that still transfers in many ways to today. But when Jesus is dying on the cross, if he had had siblings, which presumably this takes place only a few years before, 
then those siblings would have taken her in, would have taken care of her. But the fact that Jesus asks someone who is not one of his blood brothers or sisters to take Mary into his home seems to imply that he is the only son of his mother and that she would be left destitute or alone with no children. And so he entrusts her to the beloved disciple. So that's a scriptural example that seems to indicate what we believe as Catholics has basis in scripture, not just in a certain sense of, well, we can explain how this passage makes sense without Jesus having any blood brothers or sisters, but we actually have a story that seems to point to the fact that, yes, this makes sense that Jesus is the only son because otherwise this passage doesn't make sense. So I, in, I invite you to watch the other video, which goes into more depth, but this is why we believe as Catholics some of the reasons why we believe that Jesus was the only son of Mary and certainly also the only son of God, the only true son of God. God bless. We'll see you next time.